this as well. This is serious fun. Yes. I wait, think, I think punchline. Wait, serious fun. I just got that. And punchline. I'm confused. Is That's... it serious fun or is it a joke? Oh, but it is that and so much more. That's... Welcome to David Lynch's tulip. Yes, your word last time was... Lips. And to be fair to you, I think this is, this is the most apropos possible result from that word. Would you like to introduce us to this uh, okay. escapade? Well, our scene opens with a dog walking up to a tree vagina. And it gets progressively stranger from there in a way that only the Japanese games really can. So Options. Got, it's Vibration. Got, that's, that's the option that I have. It's even got lip right there in the name. Yep. There Are is you ready for that? There is a man being birthed from the tree. And a monkey boy has approached. Yeah. There's, this is a little bit like there's a movie called um, I think Suicide this is, Club. I think this is a dream Carl Pilkington's having. Where he's a tree talking to his best monkey friend. There is a very Pilkington quality about this guy. Who's we we, we actually meet him again later, but uh, this what? establishes the story, sort of, or at least the goal, like the main character goal. Is the screen going to be vibrating up and down the whole way through? Probably. It wasn't doing that when I was playing it. Okay. I look forward to that driving everybody insane. Uh, you s- ah, cum slut. I thought that was an L at the start for a second there. Lum slut? Yes. I'm an absolute slut for lums. And here comes my dear, soon to be betrothed child bride. Yes, I've seen this game before, and this whole segment at the start seems to be mainly just to spoil. The uh, central conceit of the game, because the game doesn't actually get to that for a very long time. It, yeah, it really doesn't. That actually surprised me. Like the the gameplay video that I did is, it does not get into sort of. Uh, I hesitant to say gameplay. Oh, is this revenge for me making you my Oregon Trail Skeksis wife? Um, why does it got to be revenge? Why do you why do you think I took that negatively? Everything's everything's fucking negative with you. Um, no, I like like I, I just like the idea of the adventures of Comslot and Yatsina. Okay, and I think Yatsina so is a funny female name. And you're Comslot in this adventure. I'm Comslot. Well, course. I'm running around trying to get kisses off of everything, which I think makes me a Comslot. Spoiler warning. <laughs> yes, the, the the central conceit of the game is the the spoiler. Heads up, Street Fighter involves punching. You have to kiss things a lot. Mm. That's the object of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now you know why. I, I had this recommended to me on Twitter, and within about a second of reading about it, I was like, yeah, it looks like i got to do this. Originally, my choice was to do, um, I have no mouth, but I must scream. But that what? is... How is that lips related? Lips, mouth. It's in the freaking title. Dude, lips. Give me a fucking break. Lips. Lips is not an easy one. Lips isn't a theme. You can't have, oh, the game is themed around lips. And yet... What else is this game? If yeah, well, there we go. Like, that's what I mean. Like, I wasn't aware of this game that, that this game existed, so I was racking my brain for like, Jesus fuck, what do I know that is kind of got lips or mouth focus? Well, I haven't played this one myself. I did watch a let's play of it. Oh, of course you have. It's by Natsume, previously of uh, Harvest Moon. I think Cooking Mama. Uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, it's one of those very peculiarly Japanese games which just seem to be sort of creating a life simulator in a world that runs on different rules to everywhere else. Oh, you have no idea. In that side group, things like Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing... What was that other one? Tomodachi Life, maybe? I don't know, I don't really play any of those games. Um, the, the, I have this thing, like, again... And now, f- now you're strapped in a dentist's chair, yeah. and the marathon man is about to torture you. Oh, Listen man. to me, cum slot. Um, there's a Japanese movie called Suicide Squad. Uh, not Suicide Squad. Suicide Club, Club which yes. is um, a really good example of just Japanese bizarro cinema. And I've had this thing where I've told people about it to go watch it, and it's happened about six times where I've just been like, okay, this movie is really weird. Like, the kind of regular Japanese weird that most of us are sort of acclimatized to now. Yes. But then... About three quarters of the way through, Suicide Club gets batshit insane. Like, it just amazing, somehow manages to pull out extra nitrous and go even faster. And this game's a little bit like that. Every time you think you've seen the weirdest thing this game's gonna throw at you, it throws something else more weird at you, which Goodbye. by the end gets Goodbye, fucking... Goodbye, cum slut. Yeah. 
Cumslut left the house. Then he went to see his friend Dan the Baker. Hello, Cumslut, said I Dan the Baker. I pooping. Of course you do. That's not yeah. even the only game that that's not even weird. No okay. more heroes does that. <laughs> Remember when Dead you Rising shit, does that? When you shit it takes your life down. Ooh, angry. Grr. Grr. I'm having a furious poo. I'm furious. Nice. So yes, you you save by pooping. There's a sneaking mechanic that is bizarrely necessary. Okay. Um, that we'll find out a little bit later. Is that so you can sneak up and kiss things? Yes. That, but, that is not problematic at all. <laughs> like, let's hide behind this wall and then <laughs> launch our lips at this one like we're doing a stealth counter in Shadow of Mordor. What I love is all the characters have a Muppety quality to them, like they're all very distinctly digital Muppets. Yeah, especially that guy. Oh, all of them. Like you'll, you, you, it, It's a little bit difficult to see sometimes because of the angle, but the, the main character's a Muppet. This, that woman with her head flapping away is definitely a Muppet. Not quite Muppety. Uh, um, is, what is there's something the doctor about, looks a little bit like uh, Guy Smiley or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, the doctor looks like Guy Smiley but there's something about you that takes away from the muppetiness oh Jesus Christ yeah there we go <laughs> that told you that looks like someone wearing a carnival costume uh, yeah it's like a mascot for a really horrifyingly racist baseball team it looks like something I would have nightmares about as a child wait for it <laughs> I'd I'm probably, a nice cum slut. I'd probably dream about it uh, yeah. eating me. And then it just does scary eyes. Whenever you finish talking to her, she does scary eyes. I'd, I'd be more afraid by the flapping mouth, I think. I'm, not, I'm going to lick you. I'm Dr. Dandy. <laughs> That's, I'm going to call you that sarcastically now. I dress like a twat. That's perfect. It's, yeah, it's this weird front of your face that's throwing me off. Yeah, like, it's because he's got Muppet head. Like, he's, his head is two distinct separate parts that flap when they try to talk. Mmm, mmm. Oh, a cold sweet potato that I found in the bin. Yeah. I See, have the time that going to consume. A compost bin, it would be a warm sweet potato. That's why you, you know, you don't just throw food into of regular course, dumpsters. Of course, which of course would make it much more appetizing. Oh, absolutely. Mm, the bacteria's been growing in this for a while. Mm, 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 mm. Bacteria just means more meal. More live things have died. <laughs> Moldy bread is just more bread. Well, I guess bacteria doesn't die if you eat it. It fucking thrives if you eat it. Yeah. It lives inside you and then you become an amazing symbiote like venom. Or it just gives you food poisoning. Yeah. Or you just shit a lot. G. Pot. Mm, he owns the antique shop, believe it or not. Okay. He's always happy to meet a cum slot. You wonder how antique shops make a living. Um, well, I guess it's the whole get rather than sell 200 things at a $10 a pop, sell two things at a $1,000 a pop. Yeah, it depends on where you go. Like, there are places on uh, Bribey Island, like proper, like, sort of th secondhand stores that a sell sleeping really dog. shit. Better let it lie then. Ah, go jab it in the eye. I and, like that. And here's Naked Snake. <laughs> and I can't even tell. The, the resolution is so small. Well, again, you could, you could make the window a little larger, but... Oh, he's wearing sunglasses? Yeah. I see. And his entire face is... Jesus Christ! A massively racist, flapping Asian character. It's weird how some Asian like, games look, look do that. Yeah, that is... <laughs> I guess, you know, that's like a racist caricature of all those other Asians. <laughs> It's like, like the Asians from the specific from the specific region of Japan. Everyone else in Japan is racist about. I would. Yeah. Uh, well, what would that be? That's. Um, I think it's the South. I know it's the South. I've heard Osaka. Like Osaka yeah, yeah, people. Japanese. I've heard Japanese people have stereotypes about Osaka. Yeah, that's weird. I didn't even know about that. It's, it's kind of like, like kind of like in America. If, like. I've heard Texas. It, I've heard it said, everyone, everyone in the world says Americans are weird. Most Americans say, nah, it's just California. Most Californians say, nah, it's just LA. Most LA residents just say, nah, it's just Hollywood. And then Hollywood goes, eeeeee, bum! Hey, you found her. Yep, game over. Soulmate. So easy. Well, that was quick. I love you, Yatsina. Touch my enormous, distended, beasting lips. Kiss. Kiss her, you fool. <laughs> um, I don't know. I remember once when I was. Well, um, that was easy. Yeah. Yes, I would rather get. Just like kidding. Oh, uh, God, it's high school again. I don't uh, like this anymore. This game isn't fun. I'm sad. Jesus, what a slut. <laughs> okay, I don't want to tell her I'm a cum slut. See, there's a lot of Japanese games where they have this, uh, um, like, dialogue choice, but they don't tell you that some of these dialogue choices, like, completely change the path of the game. I don't think these ones do. 
Oh, hey, the phone I found is ringing. Oh, God, I knew that would happen. Yeah. Before we were doing recording, Gabriel found a lost phone on the street. And uh, he decided he was going to leave his number next to it and so that they could and then take the phone with him. And he's probably going to leave me alone for a while while he goes and returns it. So um, I guess you're stuck with me for a while, listener. Yep, there he goes. You know, Gabriel doesn't watch these videos back, so uh, I guess I can say whatever I like about him now. You know, I don't think Gabriel's very intelligent. And I think he's the last person to realise that. Has anyone else picked up on that? He's like got the got the sort of thing that a precocious 12-year-old has, where they sort of have sounding intelligent confused with actually being intelligent. It's not even that. He's got sounding intelligent confused with just being incredibly boring and difficult to listen to. Oh, and I think he's just dramatised uh, most of his actual love life there. Yep, it's still just me. Because Gabriel has to go down in the lift and be a good citizen. I said it would interrupt the record. Okay, I guess he just had to go and double check and make sure those eyes were as terrifying as they were the first time. <sighs> so yeah, this is... Well, I talk shit about him, but I kind of need someone to bounce off, I find, because otherwise I just sort of panic. Maybe I should just sing a little song until he gets back. Oh, I think I hear him at the door. One second. Ugh. Okay, so I'm guessing while I was gone, Yahtzee about as pleasant as shit on your face, Croshaw, was doing his whole big routine about how finding a Galaxy S5 and going to the effort of giving it back to the person who lost it was somehow a bad thing. Well, uh, not really. I was mainly just talking- That's what you were doing when I found it. Yahtzee tried to convince me not to bother. Well- Think about that for a second. Well, it's to teach you a valuable lesson, wouldn't it? There we go. That's, yeah, there we go. I, I wanted to get a Galaxy S5 back to its owner, who seemed very happy on getting it back, I might add. And Yahtzee, of course, mainly, but not because of any other reason, but it was my idea. Anything that I come up with, Yahtzee just has to shit on, because he's got some sad need to call out everything I do, to the point where handing a phone back to the person who lost it is a bad thing. Are you just going to self-aggrandize for the next ten minutes? I'm not self-aggrandizing. Oh, I'm it sounds fun a lot. Of you being a dickhead. Well, it, well, you seem to be doing that mainly by self-aggrandizing, from what I'm hearing you're there. You're a dickhead. And you're a self-aggrandizing twat. Sad, negative little man. And you're a fucking idiot. Come, slut. Are you kissing your dad? Yes. You won't get experience by kissing me. We've yes. done that far too often. Is Alone that... at night, when <laughs> I come that... into your room. <laughs> Never to talk about that outside. Remember, you'll get it punished. Yes, and I'll buy you a teddy bear after each time. The sad thing is, it's incredibly And those teddy simplified. bears stare at you from the chest of drawers. <laughs> and each stare reminds you of another night. The sad thing is, as simplified as it is, it is faintly accurate. Like, you kiss more people, you get more self-confidence, you can take more rejection. Rejection like that. Okay. So you just tried to kiss the scary lady who looks yeah. like she's going to eat, eat you. I, f I was just curious to see what happened. So and kiss so to kiss someone is just like a button you have. Yeah, is like triangle, push triangle to kiss. And I was going to kiss Dr. Dandy, but then I thought, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Well, 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 fair play to this game. It seems to have uh, no judgment against homophobia. Um, no, like, you know, you, uh, I'm not sure if you're, you kiss dudes later in it. Probably not, because I think the main character is heterosexual. I think you do kiss dudes. Um, oh, well, like, I, I didn't get that far. What I recall. Yeah, and I just uh, walk past that street corner prostitute, continue <laughs> on your day. She's my true love. Bastard, right. you just don't understand. Well, she's got so many attractive features, doesn't she? Yeah, she's, she's there. She stands there. She exists. Yeah, she, uh, she kicks you in the balls at the slightest opportunity. She knows your name. She must be one of those Tsundiras I can't pronounce properly. Oh, that's right, that's that hentai thing. 
Was it a hentai thing? Well, it's not an necessarily hentai. Yeah, it's like just like a Japanese character type. Okay. Um, yeah, so now you know, now we get sort of into the meat and potatoes. I mean, you right. know, basically oh, no. how the gameplay works, which... I know, a dog stole the letters out. We better kiss it to get it back. <laughs> no, this is, um, this is introducing the stealth gameplay. Yes. Because basically you're not allowed to... You're not allowed to kiss someone angry. So you have to sneak up on them right. until they're not angry. Because uh, I'm sure their mood will be greatly improved once you <laughs> yeah. forcibly sexually assault them. That's pretty much it. That's you know that's what the pickup artist forums always go on about. Um, I'm just imagining that being said in a very racist accent. <laughs> Stupid dog! Stupid dog! It is really like Mickey Rooney and Breakfast at Tiffany's. There we go. And yeah, I stuck up, and then I tried to sneak away, and then the dog bit me, so I don't understand what happened there. But Okay. Yeah. Trying no. to sneak off. Yeah. I won't have that. <laughs> None of that business. And so what happens if you run out of hearts? Um, you, you die. Okay, you die from not from being kissable sadness. enough. Yeah. Suicide rate. So I think it's. I think this game's a giant big metaphor for the afterlife, actually. But. I suppose the question is, who is this game for, and what is it supposed to teach them? <sighs> That's. Is it for like a code of conduct for Japanese young people? Possibly. Remember, only kiss people when either you're fairly certain they want it, or they don't know where you are. Yeah. And if they don't like you, build up interesting characteristics, and you know, get a fuck, get a few fucking practice fucks in. That's important. Georgie Porgy Pudding and Pie was a reference for living. <laughs> Wasn't it one of the kings? No, no, Georgie Porgy Pudding and Pie kissed the girls and made them cry. Yeah, I know, but I thought it was about like one of the King Georges or something. I don't know, possibly. Okay. It's one of sounds like one of those clever satires they come up with in the seventeenth century. Yeah, or like how Ring Around the Roses was about disease and dying. That's apocryphal. What's that? It's not true. Hmm? Is it? No, it was not, nothing to do with the, the plague. Yeah. What's it about then? Just it's just a sh funny children's around? rhyme. Not yeah, everything has to have a deep meaning. Well, I don't know. I heard that fucking, you know... Well, from an apocryphal source, yes. Yeah. That was debunked a long time ago. Huh. Oh, that's interesting. Are you, now you're going to kiss a letter. Yeah. With my uh, pants. I'm guessing that's what these uh, obviously copy-pasted and mirror-flipped flower images are for. <laughs> I've How many Twitter messages have you got pretty much like this? It's fucking um, freaky as shit, isn't it? Dear Yahtzee. From what, I've, from what I have perceived of you, I have decided I am head over heels in love. I know. I know. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I looked at you and... Received love letter. Yeah. <laughs> you just wrote that. You didn't receive it. And now I'm going to go brag about my love letter to my neighbours, because that's not intensely creepy. Hey, check out this love letter I haven't sent to this person who despises me. <laughs> and did you notice how personal the love letter was? Like, it knew so much about her. Like, it was like, yeah, I love I, you, I love I you really, lots I love you, lots. love you. Yeah, it's just really like a five-year-old's idea of romance at this point, isn't it? Yeah. It's puppy love. It's, a, it's his first crush. Ah, <laughs> The first crush of newsboy cap chimp. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it like I thought there was like maybe a postman aspect to this game, but there isn't. Well, you look like one. That's yeah. You got, a, you got your little letter satchel there. Yeah, that was my first thought. Was oh, you must be some look, kind of postman. Look how she watches you like a fucking security system. Ding, ding, ding. I thought about giving her the letter there, but then I thought that sounds like a trick. Okay. Yes. Here's. Okay, yeah. I'm just accepting this. There is a man who's a telegraph pole and who's got Carl Pilkington's face halfway up it. Yeah, and this is where the game. Starts to... This is just one of the many upgrades in Weird. Okay, so apparently this game is intended as advice for small business owners. Yeah. Represented your, by poll men. Remember to pay your employees. That's how economies work. Yeah. Otherwise your traffic poles will run away. Then we'll have no power. So yeah, that does come up a bit later. And the game just gets strange, because now, now I've got access to a new location. Okay, thanks, Telegraph Pole Man. <laughs> He's probably like, the Telegraph Pole spirit is probably like a well-known Shinto deity Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this is all perfectly logical for, for a Japanese player, because of there's cultural anyone, things. Yeah, if there's anyone watching this from Japan, can they please tell me if this is weird to you? I was uh, doing, doing some notes for a possible Silent Hill 2 deconstruction. 
And I noticed how toilets seem to come up in the game a lot. And I wondered if that was intended as some uh, deeper meaning. But on research, it seems that the toilets just seem to crop up in Japanese urban legends a lot. Wasn't there that, that hand thing in Zelda? That lives in the toilet? Uh, it was in Skyward Sword and like one of the other ones. I don't I'm know, not sure some. it lives, comes from the toilet in Zelda. But they got it does. Um, it does in Skyward Sword. There's a hand in a the toilet. There's a, an urban legend not dissimilar to the Bloody Mary urban legend that exists in the West, mm-hmm. where if you go into a bathroom and you hear crying, uh, you'll find a scary little girl in the toilet because she died there during the war or something. And but it goes back further than that. Apparently, there's a lot of uh, evil demons in Japanese folklore who hang out in the toilet. It's an effective horror thing because it's it's the horror the toilet is where you make yourself most vulnerable. And for some reason the Japanese don't aren't so embarrassed about it as some cultures. As we might demonstrate later on in this game. There's yeah, well you know, the taboo of uh, the toxic. I noticed know, we haven't filth. found any poo yet. And from what I remember of this game, there is quite a poo fixation. I only get to one poo reference that's a little peculiar and kind of accidental, so I haven't oh. seen, I don't know, I haven't seen the rest of... Well, poo, from what I saw the videos I watched, poo seems to be a fairly common random drop you find in dumpsters. Huh. Yes. Because I do find poo, but I find poo in a location. <laughs> You're cum slut, the poor boy. Cum slut, the poor boy from a poor family. Have some sweets. <laughs> no, that's Perhaps the thing. that will wash the taste out of your mouth. I thought she was giving me sweets. She doesn't. It's about now when I notice that the billboard is for a movie called The Fart Woman. Of course. <laughs> That's another thing about Japanese culture. You can never tell what's fetishized or not. Well, I mean, a fetish, you know, you can fetishize anything. So is, it just this, is, is this a fetish game? To some people, it probably is. I'd hate to get married to the person who has this game serving their fetish. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I want you to understand how much the cop terrifies me, and how that plays into something that happens a bit later, and how that horrible fucking face is now how... That face is what I apply to the surveillance state of the world. I think you've just run into Ao Oni. I don't know what that is. Well, look it up. This has been Yahtzee Croshaw with his informative, helpful chats. Oh, the internet knows. It's one of the very heavily Let's Played games. Oh, okay. What's it about? Uh, well, it's an RPG maker horror game about an Ao Oni, which means blue demon. Huh. And basically just like a guy with a, with a, who's got a normal looking face, but he's blue and has a massively large head. <laughs> and he just grabs you and the screen goes black and it just you just assume that you died somehow. But he's a fucking freaky looking dude. And that was my first thought when I saw that guy. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I could eat you without having to chew. <laughs> I am the face of order. You will kneel to me. Kneel to the face of order. Hmm. Like, honestly, if that face replaced, like, Big Brother and the Big Brother is watching you posters, everyone would sit the fuck down and behave. That is just... Ugh. You're the new guy in town. I work nights as a hotel bell. <laughs> yeah, things on heads seem to... That yeah. literally is a hotel bell on his head, isn't yes. it? I was being facetious. No, it's a hotel... Well, it's not a hotel bell. He works in the train station, so it's like oh, a see. thing to summon... Summon the conductor yeah. or whatever. Which you can only use when he's already there. So it's really just on a the job. to torture and harass the conductor. I see. Which, I, I, the, by the very end of me playing this, I started to get to the conclusion this was some kind of weird afterlife. Maybe they're just trying to boost their employee numbers because they get a tax break. Uh, you have someone whose job is to be the bell. Be the bell. Full employment! Be the bell. Mm. So you also I, have a guy whose job is to be the pencil sharpener. He just opens his mouth the whole, all day. <laughs> you can... I just thought of like, okay, does that only happen once? No, I'm just not allowed through here. Oh, and here he comes yeah. again. A pole just comes down. <laughs> yeah, recites some cure lyrics, and then leaves. You can never understand how I feel, for you are not a telegraph pole. I, I Oh, that's true. That, that is, yeah, that is a but large But you can barrier. never understand what it's like to be a chimp boy. This is what living in society is. This game is fucking peculiar, man. It's about give and take. But I don't know, like, I suspect that this is some kind of weird afterlife. So I'm curious to see, like, you know, do you think that, you know, you've seen more of the, the game than I have at this point. No, I think it's yet. just a dramatization of an average Japanese boy's day. <laughs> I saw your sneaky little mouse cursor there. Yeah, I bumped it. 
Can't fool me. I still haven't left it on the fucking thing for a whole game yet. Okay, is it kissy time? Um, you I have try, a... at this point I tried giving her the letter, and... What a moo! Yeah, but like, watch this, so I, I gotta give her the letter. Uh, a letter. I <laughs> <laughs> well, just can't take a hint, can <laughs> you? It's actually for you, um... Who's this from? A secret admirer. Is that you? Yes! <laughs> yes. Are we girlfriend's boyfriend now? <laughs> Will you touch my doodle? Would you please let me crush my weird Muppet face against yours? <laughs> and we'll do that face Kermit the Frog makes when he's perplexed by something. I was just thinking that exact same fucking thing. The sprinkled up crunch the face. The crunched up perplexed Kermit face. <laughs> Can you do a Kermit voice? No. Damn it. Haven't tried. Not I thought that'd have been somewhere in your arsenal, given that you have Kermity undertones. Haven't tried. Not going to try to improv one. You do have Kermity. There's definitely a Kermit sort of element to your voice. I'm not give it a try. I'm not sure how to take that. <laughs> well, right. look, he's making the scrunched up face. Well, you do a Kermit voice then. <sighs> Dude, I'm not, you know, I, I don't fancy myself a singer or a voice actor. Um, yeah, so now someone's talking to me, and yeah, the, the mailbox tells me my love letter is terrible. Which is nice, because somebody had to. It was nice, it's nice to know that someone's uh, got enough sense. Mm. If that was a conventional mailbox, it would have just delivered that without judgement, and what a fool you would have looked like then. <sighs> More mailboxes need to do that. Or yeah. email boxes these days. Yeah, I, I, what I want is for the government to open all the letters, read them, and then uh, advisors on uh, segments of it it found distasteful. I think that 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 could never possibly be abused. That would be nice, you know, if like Asio was just sort of checking through and was like, "All right, look, you sent these three emails last night to your employer while we presume you were drunk. Mm. Um, we've held them off for now. Yes, but uh, if you'd like to review it, then we could just forward those along. Yes, uh, I couldn't help um, noticing this thing you said about the current uh, government party. Uh, well, maybe you'd like to reword that a little bit as well. Just take that bit out. And have and I showed you this brochure same. for the gulag we've just built? <laughs> you know the terror Australia is so good for gulags too. Yeah. Like pretty much most of the country is just just ripe for it. Well, at least the gulags are on tropical islands. <laughs> it's better than Siberia. Uh, I There's don't know, that man. at least. I'd rather be chilly than fucking hot. Like yeah, I'm getting eaten alive by the mozzies. Yeah. Oh well, you never lived in the northern hemisphere, have you? Trust me when I say it's, I, sometimes I know it's, yeah. cold, it gets too cold. Uh, to uh, even be red remedied by putting more layers on. So you get just... fucked up things in the tropics, though, man. Like giant okay, centipedes. Okay, just, going, just yeah. going down to the sewers. Yep. Here's Carl Pilkington. Yep, here he is again. With the light bulb of ideas above him. Is he the same Carl Pilkington who has the telegraph pole? Uh, no, but those two are... Well, I didn't think he was, because Carl Pilkington Telegraph Pole must have extremely long legs. This is Michio Suzuki. See? How did you not know that? <laughs> okay. It's obviously... That just like, you know, Brian Reynolds. Yeah, In, in Japanese. Hello, I'm Dave Williams. I'm, yes, I'm Brian Reynolds, and uh, I'm a Mr. Saturn type motherfucker who lives in a sewer. Yeah, what is that? Are there any Japanese sewers that can chime in on this? Is he like a spirit? I that's the thing about like Shinto. There are a lot. I read other people's letters and criticize them. <laughs> you perform a vital service. Speaking of weird Japanese You can things, kiss her under the legendary tree on the hill. I've never heard it called that before. <laughs> Is that like a name for a little bit of leftover pubic hair? Like the little stylized? Yes. A little bit of fluff. Yes, let's draw this gag out. Anyway... Oh, okay, so apparently Sewer Carl Pilkington also gives lessons on romancing women, because of course he would. Come here, you lonely lady. I have a boy slut for you. That's an onion. No, it's an onion woman. Oh, well, that makes... Uh, onion lady. <laughs> you know, that makes you wonder. Is the onions we eat, are they part of the uh, male or female part of the plant? Viva. I have no idea. But yeah, so you have to wait until she's not angry, and then kiss her. Kiss onion lady And you have to sneak up like... on her while she's... Yeah, see, I accidentally wasn't sneaking, and then she comes over and just fucking headbutts me. I don't imagine you'll have heard these five words before, but kiss onion lady come slut. <laughs> you have to sneak up to angry people, obviously. Yeah, kiss them. Ugh. This is such good Jesus, advice. haven't you ever lived in Japan before? 
Okay, fangirls, this is- for- for all of you wondering, this is exactly how you approach Yahtzee. Just sneak up on him when he's angry, wait until he mellows a little bit, like, you know, mention chocolate or puppies. Oh man, fuck that street corner prostitute. I think we've just- we've just, uh, discovered true love in yes. the onion lady. True love in the onion lady. You just so had to peel back her layers of anger. That was level one, was it? To find the little- yeah, I've leveled up now. Alright. Through the power of making out with vegetables. Which I don't recommend as a way of getting better at dealing with human beings. I think you'll yes. find the two respond fairly differently to each other. But then again, be inappropriate with a parsnip and learn some uh, useful fellatio techniques. <laughs> Have you had to break out the training parsnip, Yancy? Is that And also cut a pomegranate in half for the female equivalent. <laughs> oh, I guess an avocado would be better. I have not fucked a thing, so that's... I'm not saying fuck the thing, I'm just saying practice cunnilingus on avocados. God, you're so weird! I've not done that. You've done that, haven't you? No. I don't believe you. <laughs> well, I've eaten a sandwich. Uh, yeah, have you eaten a sandwich or have you eaten a sandwich? So at this point... I don't know, after you talked about, I don't know, some of the things you've said just makes me believe that's a thing that's actually Well, I occurred. used to eat Jaffa cakes by peeling the orange bit off and uh, sort of licking all the chocolate, chocolatey flakes off it, which I imagine would give, be good training in kind of lingus, at least. Getting away from this. Did you see David Letterman standing next to a hologram wondering about his life? I didn't see it, but I think it's an interesting story. The Japanese virtual idol, because that's a thing now, Hatsune Miku, made a live appearance on David Letterman. You if were implying that it was uh, done in a way to sort of take the piss out of the concept. Oh, no, no, no. It was on there, le it was on there legit, but, like, Dave pulled his face, which is what one that you call him pulls. Dave, like he's your friend. He is my it? friend. I've been watching Letterman for, like, almost my entire life, actually. It's fucking weird how long that show's been on the air. Like when I was, I remember being six, and it's like you'd go over to dad's house and he wouldn't make you like, you know, because it was Friday, I didn't have to go to sleep, or get up, you know, early, so I got to stop and watch Letterman. Yes, quite, but his, but history was made as a, the virtual idol, who's, even, the, even their voice is uh, synthesized, apparently, their singing voice. Yeah, see, I, I sat down and I watched it, and I, I don't know... I hesitate to say her singing voice. Yeah, like, I was kind of confused as to what the big deal was, because essentially it's just a pre-recorded act. I thought she might... I thought part of the fun of it being a hologram was there something kind of clever involved where Dave was going to talk to her and she was going to answer in real time. That or... would have been fucking excruciating, wouldn't it? It would have been something. As it is, it's just a pre-recorded show of... And it, she was basically a gif. Like, she had four dance moves that she repeated, and that was it. And I'm just baffled as to what the big deal is. Like... I'd find something excruciating about watching television presenters patronize robots. <laughs> it's like when they brought Asimo onto that one episode of QI. And they were all like really, th and they were saying, wow, he's amazing, he can even run, Azuma. Why don't you show us your lovely dancing moves? I'm just like, I'd just be embarrassed for the robot community at this point. <laughs> so I'm glad don't they didn't talk try to, to us. I'm glad they didn't try to have any kind of engagement with the hologram lady. No, but I, I mean, I don't know, I'm trying to work out what the appeal of the hologram lady was in the first place. Well, that's my question, but that's Japanese all over, isn't it? They like virtual love thing, that's where the maid cafe and uh, idol culture comes from. You pay someone to pretend to like you for Yeah, a but bit. that's a person there doing a thing. Like, this, is, this was literally a gif well, it's no singing. More, it's no more real emotionally. Eh. Easier to uh, engage the delusion, I'd say. Yes, they're, they're quite big on escapism. Must, must have been that nuclear bomb that did that. <laughs> hey, real life is the place where we all die of radiation poisoning. Wanna th maybe get away from that. Well, that's kind of a strict culture. But remember, there's been a few attempts... Uh, over the years to sort of force the concept of a virtual actress like the um, the final Simone. fantasy spirits within film like the the main character of that they were going to try they going to they were going to if the film had done any better they were going to attempt that with her to create a sort of virtual actress concept but um, i don't think you could force such a thing i think this is this, this thing seems to have happened naturally like this character Hatsune Miku i think she was just a mascot for some kind of electronics hardware or something like that of course and she just seems to have uh, really taken off and become a character in herself and and uh, everything, you know. As, I, was, How, I don't know anything about what she's supposed to be outside of this. I was just kind of disappointed with the whole fucking, you know, shop song and well, dance. I kept seeing pictures of her around. I was like, I suppose she must have been some popular anime or something. 
as uh, I, th- I think as a natural assumption to come to. That's, that's, no, that's I guess I because I guess because she's not like a defined character, Everyone then she can, can have project. whatever character you want. All right, here's a question: How would you? What would you say is the difference between a virtual idol performance like Hatsune Miku mm. and say the gorillas? Um, well, have the gorillas? I mean, see, the thing would be. The gorillas have not only like the animated section, but they also have stage personas yes. that they then can do live stage acts that have a degree of uniqueness to that performance and can interact and modify based on what the crowd's doing, based on different things that happen that kind of make it a little unique. So take the bottom things live, for instance. Yeah. They were all a little different. I mean, sure, they're the same fucking story over again, but... Yeah, they have the same script, but yeah. the, the, uh, a lot of it is in the improvising and there stuff. There we go. And there'll be a lot of that to, like, live performances. Well, you can't improv an animation. And that's, that's, yeah, and, and that's... That's what, that's what the gorillas' live performances were. They'd had, like, as I understand it, they, like, project the cartoon characters onto something. Oh, they'd have that going there, yeah. But um, they'd also have... A live performance element to it. Like, it wasn't just they'd play a cartoon and then go backstage. Yeah, but... And that's what I mean. Like, what this would, is all cartoon. What would have been in addition to the cartoon, then? Well, they, they, they have a live stage performance. So they... The, the, the people who do the voices for the... You know, and whose alter egos are kind of represented by the animated characters are there doing a show. So they are on stage? Yes. Wouldn't that sort of spoil the illusion? I think adults are okay with not... Okay. Understanding that it's not the cartoons making the music. I think that people can figure that out. But in this case, it is sort of the cartoon making the music because it's a synthesized voice. Yeah, but again, like, it's, it's all preset. And it's not like an animated... I'm not playing animated instruments. It's just, it's, just, it's just a singer. Yeah. It's just a singer. There were two, like, actual dudes playing some kind of... I can't remember exactly what instruments. I think it was well, like you know, they've got, or... they got to have the band. Yeah, so there was an actual sort of band when, thing there. When you're the band to the singer, you're, you're basically the equivalent of a roadie. You're just sort of there puppeting the instrument, and the actual person is just sort of this sort of blank mass positioned behind it. That's your role if, mm-hmm. you, if you're in, like, a singer-focused tour. I'm just struggling to work out, like, what the... You know, like, there isn't a live element to this. Why is the Zeds coming out of the Doctor's elbow? Because his elbow fell asleep. He took a bunch of drugs. I see. And now I'm looking at all the stuff he wrote down. And now he thinks he's an elbow. His entire person is contained within his elbow. His face does have a kind of elbowy hinge to it. Hey, why don't you kiss him while he can't resist, you fucking creepy rapist boy? I found a hole. This is my first experience with the holes. Okay, this is going to turn into Silent Hill now. Yes. There is a hole here. It's still here. Like, you'll hear there's a weird sound when it says underground residence, which is strange. And then it it just, this is what we see. Well, underground residence isn't going to go anywhere nice, is it? Okay, is that a gimp? Yes. There is a gimp. Yes. In a sewer hole. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, he seems a little bored. Yeah, he's a little something. Chuck's life. he's... Right, so just to go back to a previous question, who is this game for and what is it supposed to teach them? Is this a fetish game? Have you tricked me into hey. watching a sexy fetish game? I don't know. That like, happened, that's the thing. Like, at the end of once. this game, I'm just left with loads of questions. That happened once. I bought Demolition Girl from uh, like an EB Games. It was like five bucks. And I thought, hey, maybe this will be an underappreciated gem. <laughs> yeah, it's the accident. It turned out bought- to be a game about taking photographs of a giant bikini girl that stomped around Tokyo. And, I've, and you realize a few seconds in, this is somebody's wank material, isn't uh, it? Oh, that's always... I remember getting a movie once called Otto, Up With Zombies, and I, I really want to like explain that nothing about the film was really explained by the packaging. I thought it, it kind of built itself as sort of, because it mentioned Shaun of the Dead, so I'm like, oh, this could be like a German Shaun of the Dead. That could be fun. It is a gay German zombie porno film that at one point involves two zombies fucking, and one of them makes a hole like just in the torso of the other one, and he penetrates it. Nowhere on the box did it mention well, that. Well, wouldn't you if you were as if you were the living dead? And I'm just—it's one of those things where you're like, this looks, 
This is looking kind of like, like, quite gay. Like, not like just there are gay characters, but like, this is a gay film for gay people to look at and jerk off to. And then, you're just like, at, you know, your brain's going, it surely isn't gonna get any gayer. And then there's that final tipping point where he's like, I'm watching a dude hump a fucking chest wound. And there's yes. sort of elements of that to this. Where look, just, it, it just... Look at what your life has brought you to. Yeah. Well, you just... I can't tell. I don't know who the game's for. Believe me, like, none of the rest of it... And the funny thing is, this game's that. been localized and sold in the West. Yeah. Makes you wonder what games they think. You know what? This is probably a bit too freaky. The Americans probably wouldn't get it. <laughs> I know. Like, of all the games, like, there are so many games that would... Like, fighting... A few basic fighting games, even. Some Demolition games. Girl got localized as well. I wonder if it's one of those cases where some struggling publisher in the West has just bought up a job lot of uh, obscure yeah. Japanese games and thought, let's just localize these and put them out and hope for the best. Probably. It's And now there's a time element to it, so like things are open uh, at certain times and bits and pieces. Ah, it's Shenmue with yeah. Poo. Shen Pui. You were going to say that, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a poo joke. You're getting predictable, man. Says the man who said it. Yeah, I said it because I knew you were about to say it. A likely story. Anyway. Um, what else we got? Oh, yes. Get well soon, Total Biscuit. Yep. Gabriel absolutely. just said we should put that on our topic list. Well, Not no, sure where see, to go from there. I was looking for topics to talk about, and one of the things that I've been seeing on Twitter lately was uh, Total Biscuit trying to play games whilst on morphine, which yeah. has been kind of funny. If you're, not, uh, if you're not heard about it, Total Biscuits is... Uh, receiving treatment for cancer at present. Yeah. And the moment you say that, that sort of makes the whole room go, oh, isn't it? Well, you know, he's fighting it. He's, apparently it's, apparently treatment's working well. Yeah, so that's yeah, good. Apparent, apparently it's um, receding. And I've, I know Total Biscuit. We've uh, hung out. We did a panel at the Escapist Expo. He's a cool guy. Well, there we go. And yeah, so that was... I just you know, I saw yeah. that come up and I thought, yeah, we may as well send a, to a get well soon to Total Biscuit. So, yes. And, uh, Continue being one of the many British people making a living from the internet. By being British. By being British. You luck, lucked out with that accent, really, didn't you? If you had a broad Australian accent, no one would give a shit what you had to say. Well, I could put on a more uh, uh, typical accent for the region I grew up in. Do it. Well, if I put on, like, a Birmingham accent... <laughs> Which is a sort of unfortunate accent that no one really wants to listen to. Because it sort of makes you sound really hapless. Should do an entire zero punctuation with accents. Sort of like the Cole Pilkington voice. You just sort of sound kind of depressing all the time. <laughs> Sad, confused. No, oh. For some reason I escaped getting a particularly specific accent from around where I grew up. Ugh. Yep, it's... Um, it's never okay. He, he moves his head like... Something from the ring. Yeah. Okay, are you a criminal? And I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I'm not saying yes to that. Or I know something bad's going to happen to me. Are you a criminal? I am from your planet. I can see into your human soul. I am not a alien creature that climbed inside the head of a police officer and is <laughs> attempting to continue his life. Please kill me. So, the police officer said there's a board of crimes, and I thought, okay, this is probably important to the game, so I went over and looked at it. Please pick a crime to confess to. Yeah. And I want you to note what was just... You don't have to remember it word for word, but notice there was nothing about walking around at night on that. Okay. That comes up later. Oh, that's right, yeah. And I had a rather bizarre... another Yet another bizarre and frightening experience with this fucking game. Um, What's that sign say? Something cola? Al alone cola. Alone cola. <laughs> it certainly is when you drink it. One is the thirstiest number. And there's just a woman under a big pile of Coke bottles, so that's okay. I thought they were paint pods. Uh, no, there's like a, it's like one of those little jar, jugs, or plastic jugs that'll have like lollipops and shit in it, and then some Coke bottles. Okay. So I'm just buried in lollipop jars today. <laughs> that's a thing I could see actually happening to you. Something like drastically catastrophic happens to your life and you sort of just start, you just get in, you hit the candy real hard. There's far too much packaging around the candy in that case. <laughs> I'm not seeing the logic. I love that that's where you go straight to is like the, <laughs> the pragmatic elements of actually consuming that How much am candy. I supposed to inhale the lollipops if they're all covered in wrapping in jars? 
I'm okay, let's surrounded by candy wrappers. Let's see what horrifying thing is waiting for us under this uh, seemingly ordinary section of street. Hey, yet another peek into the world of Silent Hill. This segment of the, these segments of the games are directed by David Lynch. <laughs> this entire game has a kind of Lynchy quality to it. Just just reminds you of that first bit in Blue Velvet, yeah. where the camera tracks under the lawn and it sees all these horrible insects crawling around. Well, that's he, he because Lynch was always about making the familiar upsetting. Yeah, that was the recurring theme of his films, really. Yeah, like the horrors that lie beneath small towns' wholesomeness. Speaking of which, Twin Peaks is making its way back to television. Oh yes, in twenty sixteen. I never really watched that, but I've seen Deadly Premonition, and that's basically the same thing. Twin Peaks is really good. Twin Peaks is one of my favorites. The first season's obviously better than the second. The weird thing um, he, I wouldn't say that. Uh, First season is obviously always better than the second. Well, I didn't say always in like you know. Every well, you sense. say well, you said it obviously in the sense that that is the standard. Oh pattern. no 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 no! For people who are aware of Twin Peaks, okay, and who watch it, because if I sit here and go Twin Peaks was great, every Twin Peaks fan will go except season two. It's like I know except season two. Well, wasn't it like had stopped early? Um, yeah, sort of. Like the network started fidgeting with him, and he got annoyed, and ah, so Lynch yes. did his usual routine of just going fuck it. The network meddling. Um, but yeah, season one was a good, tight, solid story arc. And just bizarre. I like to think that person isn't facing away from us. That's just what they look like. <laughs> They're a freak. It's you dancing drunk. Flamingos are falling down. Flamingos are very good. Well, thank you thank you for your contribution. Flamingos are falling down, falling down. Flamingos are very good. Dun. And then here comes Mr. Pole to tell me I've reached the limits of my of course he is. existence. This is his role in life. <laughs> so wait, is the implication here that he will let you past once you understand his despair? The whip of love. That wasn't the whip of love. You're not even balls. wearing a gimp suit. <laughs> no one knows what it's like to be a sad pole. Get Put these assless chaps on and I'll show you the whip of love. Someone's going to point it out, so I may as well. All chaps are arseless. That's their definition. Oh, fine. <laughs> Which is why I think we should call trousers arsed chaps. Is the same true of crotchless panties? No. no. That'd be weird if they were kind of like riding panties you wore that had no crotch specifically. Just so you can really get the fucking saddle up in there good. Mm. Yeah. No one's in this one, which I think paints an almost darker picture given that it's just a weird... No, I think there's someone hiding under that uh, vaulting horse. <laughs> yep, thought as much. It's not, not, not a good space for gymnastics, I don't think. Someone's digging another tunnel to a deeper section of the tunnel where things somehow twice as freaky as the things <laughs> just, going on, on the first just level. Just gets deeper and darker and deeper and darker. You go under there and it's just a dog with the face of a man eating the feet of a baby. <laughs> And the baby's laughing throughout. He thinks it's a funny game. It's the blood spurts of his crunching wounds. Then there's a guy in the corner talking about all the women who'd have had sex with you if you just weren't such a big pussy. And in the other corner, the baby's mother is playing a little organ with with the little hand crank. And a monkey claps with glee. I love simple monkeys. They they should make a go. Actually, just give the monkeys in zoos symbols to play. See if they pick it up. They'd probably destroy each other. (laughs) Chimps are vicious little cunts. Speaking from bitter experience, there, Yahtzee. They'd use the sharp edge of the symbol to cut each other's throats and then eat each other. I love the idea of yeah, yeah, just a super chimp evolving who has mastered the symbol. Chimps in the wild are fucking evil, man. Ah, you know. They're jerks sometimes, they're nice sometimes, depends on the chimp. That Frodo chimp was a fucking psychopath. They cannibalize. They eat people's faces off. This is going from, like, facts you've picked up to strange prejudice level. Yeah, yeah, a chimp killed my parents. (laughs) This is is why you put on a costume and fight chimp crime. Yes, I dress up like a banana. And just as they get close enough, and seeing the giant banana and thinking all their Christmases have come at once, I strike! I strike with the electric taser. Like the reverse rape of monkey temptation. And I stick the electric taser right up that little red monkey bum. And then, and then once they've been trained to, to distrust bananas, they just cannot function as chimps anymore. They just waste away. I've wanted to go to one of those resorts that have the the monkeys that like like to get hammered. 
and um, just find one who's got a hangover, because they'll be there. They'll be there asleep, just crashed out, really horrible, just with an air horn and just squeeze it, and just watch him wake up and shriek, and then look at me, and just in this moment know that I did it to be a jerk, because he's hungover, and in that beautiful moment there'll be a bit of trans-species understanding. What is wrong with you? Why do you hate the chimp so much? <laughs> <laughs> See, there we go. Yahtzee's ready to stuff a taser up a chimp's butt until it's my idea. Well, I understand my <laughs> feelings are based <laughs> okay. on irrational just, hatred. Just in a... Just a snapshot, just perfect. I don't know why you want monkey schadenfreude. Um, well, as we're getting on to the 50-minute mark, um, PC Gamer did a review of, um, what's that thing called? Alien Isolation. Yes. And one thing that came up in it that I thought was interesting and is something you'll actually talk about because you don't want to talk about the game itself, which is fair, is PC Gamer took time to argue that anyone, or not anyone, but that people who were perhaps expecting it to be quicker or something like that were playing it wrong. And that's something I'm interested in, is the idea of, are you playing it wrong? Well, my first instinct is to say that Playing it wrong is always the excuse given by the creator of a shit game to excuse the fact that everyone hates it. Well, even a broken clock can be right twice a day. Yes. I mean, have there been any games in your personal history that you've gone back and replayed and maybe had a brighter opinion of because you come at it differently? Well, for uh, Dark Souls most classically, I suppose. Uh, I was almost literally playing that wrong just because the game hadn't told me how to play it. I didn't know you had to be human to summon things or to kindle bonfires. It does not explain any of didn't that. Didn't even know how kindling works and know how effective shields were. Well, well you just wait, you're running around without a shield. I had to do some research before I, well, before I could uh, actually get into it. It seems interesting that you. So just... I suppose in this, in the, like a strictly literal sense, uh, it was possible that I was playing that wrong. I'm gonna go missed. But going back to Alien Isolation, I mean, I won't review it, but I'm not sure it's possible to play that wrong. I mean, you you learn pretty swiftly uh, that you can't really rely on combat just because there are so little combat materials given to you. Well, you I have think no it... real uh, no real uh, agency except to be stealthy and stuff. I think it was more an attitude, possibly, to pacing. So, um, like, you may have been approaching it with uh, the incorrect understanding of what mood the game was trying to create. Well, I think at that point you can start blaming the game. Mm. Because, um, well, in fairness, it's called Alien, and then it's like hours into the game before you even meet an alien. I mean, a lot of it is sort of based around, uh, uh, like, the player expected to already have an understanding of what they're being let in for. I think it was scarcely billed as a as an action title, though. Well, it wasn't. It's you know. it is uh, very much a survival horror game. I don't think it's unfair for a game to presume someone playing it may have experienced some of the marketing for said game. Like, I think you are in an alien minority there, where you, in your job, are sort of forced to approach it in a bizarrely neutral fashion. I think, I think that's I think that's that's, a, that's an unusual element. Well, it is certainly getting harder and harder to avoid hype for games. I mean, it's just because I take a professional interest that I have to say, take a sort of hard line in not watching hype. A lot of people who don't to have that interest will just sort of be casually exposed to hype, just as they browse, idly browse the web. Yeah, well, I mean, even, you know, tweets and... Uh, yeah, even even a tweet saying, ooh, this game's good, can sort of... Put Yahtzee almost, in a sulk. Can sort of almost spoil uh, the first experience with a game, because you'll have that in your mind. Someone said it's good, now I think it's going to be good, now everything that's slightly bad about it's going to stand out extra and... Well, it's not that I worry that I think it'll be good, it's that I worry that when someone, when I've heard it's good, I'll be trying to look for where they came to that conclusion. And I think that sort of taints your own perception. See, I don't know, when someone builds something up, I tend to notice flaws more than I look for the bits that they actually liked. Well, that comes from a very human desire to be contrary. Well, no, but I mean, if someone says, like, hey, this is really good, and then you're expecting it to be good by, like, your understanding of good, that's, you know, that I think is the problem of, like, hype. That's why I think you can come at hype with, I think, a sensible attitude. I think it's just letting the hype get to you, I think, is a little silly. Is this getting off topic? I mean, the original topic was, is it possible to play a game wrong? I think it's, you know, it's grown organically. I think there's, I mean, hell, the, the, the example I'll give is Mist. Mm. And, you know, I think, the, I freely admit, by the end of the, the play that we were doing, Robert, I was actually enjoying Mist. Well, yeah. Yeah, I was feeling a sense of accomplishment. When we figured out, well, you know, when we figured out that fucking first puzzle, I was like, hey, 
I used deductive, like a fucking reasoning thing. I put two and two together in a puzzle that was not like insanely spelled out, which well, is kind of what I'm used to these days. Well, the sense of accomplishment is how they get you, especially <laughs> in games like World of Warcraft, where it sort of spaces the game around making you want to hear the level up sound. Yeah, but see, that's just I think, a little more, and I get to the end of the experience bar, and then I can hear that sound again. I think that's an artificial version of it, though. Like, this was, we figured something out that wasn't laid out for us, and it wasn't that kind of adventure game bizarro logic. But it was unintuitive, I'd say. The, the thing looked like the thing, and we, we pieced that together, and we're like, oh, that's, I don't know, I, that's how I felt. I felt like I'd figured something out that was a reflection of my actual ability to. To put okay, a so, together. so you'd say that's playing Mist right? Um, what, what is no, I think I, I I came at it expecting something very different the first time I played it. And oh yeah, here's this. I found some poo. There you go. And the poo hurts me. But, yes, that's what I remember. Find you find poo. I know. I have no one to blame but myself. Really? I mean, I went into a chicken coop and picked up something on the ground. I didn't know what this was until I picked it up and held it aloft. Yeah, and I'm like, I better huh. eat. Yeah, I think it's poo. I am Data from Star Trek. I'm trying to reach some conclusions. You know what the best part this. is? The poo hurt me. It's in my inventory. Yes. So I have the poo. Like, yeah, it's still with sung, me. Yeah, just... Just sung... oh, oh, dear. That was a disappointing experience. Yeah. Better put this away for later. I Why when would I'm... I want to continue holding the poo? I'll put it away for later for when I'm more prepared for holding poo. Yeah, I'm not at a high enough level to yet wield poo. Yes. That's the issue. That's I, I have to up my... Uh, yeah, poo stats. Yes. Up my revulsion. Yeah. You picked the perk. Shit fingers. You can now fling poo. What's that you good for? Uh, well, I've forgotten where we were on, <laughs> on mist. Um, oh, just that I think I was approaching it as though it would be like a tr an adventure game that I was more familiar with. So <coughs> things are a little more spelled out. Right. And I think I, I still think there's problems with the free look one because it's hard to tell what actually is a puzzle. Like that thing on the floor in the um, area we're struggling to work out with. I didn't even know I was really interacting with that. So that, I think that's a bit yeah. of a difficulty. But I definitely was. I was legitimate, legitimately enjoying the uh, the Mist game by the end of it, and I was surprised with myself at how much my opinion had changed about Mist. So I okay. believe in this circumstance, I was approaching Mist incorrectly. Okay, I still think Mist is a bad game. Uh, I'm not allowed to buy booze yet because apparently I'm like eight. So yeah, I got the the, the girl I love's business card. That that's not creepy. <laughs> and you can show it to people, and they'll tell you like gossip about her. So I have no her idea why she card. gave it to her card. I'm gonna stalk her and make I like, make a list of all the things she likes and dislikes. This is such an excellent manual for. Here's hoping she likes storing poo. <laughs> I'm going to keep my own poo in jars in my basement. And when we're married, I will show them to her. Look, glory upon them. And if she, and I'm sorry if she can't appreciate my enthusiasm for cataloging my own shit, then it probably isn't meant to be. I store them, organize a brief description. Uh, oh no, me, is, me Goro, poo jars. is Goro from Mortal Kombat victimizing people? Yeah, he doesn't like buskers. Or poo. Or Japanese people. I don't know. So it's, it's pretty bad for him to be in the game, actually. Yes. And the idea is, yeah, everyone thinks that because we're new to town, that this is this is the basic sort of puzzle that I've been wandering around trying to work out how to solve, is um, there's a giant rock on the railway tracks, as we saw earlier. Oh dear. Yeah. Let's hope the municipal authority is sorting that out. I do kind of, like, one thing I will say that's really good about this game is the time passes in a fascinatingly organic way. Like, if it gets to a certain so. point, and you can follow this guy and he goes home. You can follow people around and watch them actually sort of conduct a day. And then uh, this happens. Ah, uh, the policeman has gone insane and is shooting people. Wasn't ready for that. And now you're dead. Yeah. Now you're a dead chimp boy. Wait for it. It, it there's, it's, it's it's not quite done fucking with you. Well, you're uh, apparently still alive, unless that's the first t the, evidence of rigor mortis settling that's in there. Jiggle mortis. Oh no, Carl Pilkington to the rescue. <laughs> and it just comes along and it's like. Fuck you! Kicks oh, me. he wasn't even rescuing you. He was just kicking you in the in the stomach. Yeah, and there's me going. All right, load state. <laughs> so it just resets. We start the game now. Yeah, I was waiting oh, to see nice. if like 
okay, do I get like my last save? No, that's just, I had no idea that was coming. I had no fucking clue. I didn't have no idea when I'm coming. <laughs> Surprise Gasm Croshaw. It just sort of pops out. So at this point I'm like, okay, <laughs> did the thing tell me I'm not supposed to? Is there a curfew? Did I miss that? No, it does not mention a fucking curfew. Hello, citizen. The yeah. voices are quieter during daylight. Keeps me calm. Mm. Yeah, good morning. Uh, are you a criminal? Soon find out. Yeah, I'm nearly 100% sure if I say yes, he'll just pull out the gun and start shooting me. So has there been a lot of youth crime in this area and they have <laughs> to instigate a curfew? There's no more youth. Because actually, actually says that. Uh, yeah, if you get more than three stamps, you'll be sent to the graveyard. Not okay. spoken to. Not have your parents called. I will fucking kill you. Well, not necessarily. It could just be community service raking leaves off the graves. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Maybe I'll... it's a scared straight program. Yeah. I'll send you to the graveyard to examine the bodies. You didn't let me finish. So I try a few other things before I sort of just think screw it and wander back to sort of complete the... Uh, have a crack at completing the goal. And what was the goal again? Kiss the lady? Uh, well, that's that's the meta goal. That's, that's the uber goal. I'm trying to... And now you've found the white slave market. Well done. <laughs> I think we'll be wanting male slaves on our poo farm okay. this year. This is one of those businesses that lets you in even though it's not in its operating hours. So that's, right. that's helpful. But I guess you'd better steal everything that isn't nailed down. Yeah, I'm going to steal me a bath. I'm going to get me one of them fancy hot springs. Hot springs are actually really nice. A lot of balls, but really nice. Uh, okay. I've heard nothing to the contrary. Hmm. So, can't really dispute that. I imagine it's as nice as any other warm bath. Well, it's, it's, it is it's like really hot. So if you, if, if that's you have how like I liked my That's how I liked my baths as yeah, well. Yeah, there we go. To the point where you go, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, like a little chimp as you get in. <laughs> Yahtzee's a dirty little monkey. It needs to be cleaned. It's been a while since I had a bath. I used to have to take baths regularly when I was a kid in my parents' house, but now it's all showers. Yeah. You have to be water conscious, but I've sort of made a point of having a bath every time I stay in a fancy hotel room. Huh. Just to, you know, embrace the decadence a bit. In fact, one time I was staying in Melbourne and they put me up for a con, I think, and they put me up in a nice, uh, really nice, uh, like, hotel where there was a TV in the bathroom over the bath. So I was like, we're doing this fucking proper style so i ran myself a nice bubble bath and i went to like the mini champagne. bar went to the mini bar poured myself a glass of wine got all the chocolate out put on sex in the city well that wasn't on the only thing i could find of channel hopping was uh, judge don deed <laughs> so, <laughs> that so i just watched the cherry on top of a beautiful picture so i just watched some uh uh english gangsters try to menace a jury while I lay in my bubble bath drinking wine. <laughs> Nothing helps Yahtzee un unwind like wine, a bubble bath. And true crime. Judge John Deed. Yes. <laughs> it's great. Anyway, let's 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 but answer it. So let's I answer a question. Let's get away from Chimpy Poo Boy. I don't um, know, I love Chimpy Poo Boy. If you could remove one video game company from history, as well as every achievement they did, who would it be and why? And that's asked by the Mudkip Dude channel. Hey! I think he just tricked me into plugging him with his name. Can't believe you fell for that old ruse. How would you answer that one, then? Um... One video game company and their entire uh, library of games and all legacy they created in the industry. Uh... Nintendo, just to see what, whether or not there'd be an industry. Well, that would be an entirely different world, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, we've had that conversation, but I think it's, uh, I think it's, yeah, it's very interesting, because... What, were there... Okay, you might know the history better than I do. Were there other companies competing to get back into the gaming uh, industry post the collapse? Like, along with Nintendo. Was there anyone sort of... Well, most... Did Sega come after fucking Nintendo sort of made a bit of headway? Sega came a bit after. I think Commodore were doing all right in Europe. Look at this guy's life. So there we go. Okay, it's, so if Nintendo it's... didn't revive console gaming, maybe we'd live in the glorious PC paradise where it was just Commodore 64 and sort of home-written computer programs. Interesting. So, so we'd have let consoles die with the 2600 and then the, the PC master race would have taken a stranglehold upon all gaming forever. I can think of worse worlds. Yeah, well that was mine. What's yours? Um... 
That's a tough one. I mean, hmm, it's hard to maybe Rebellion, the uh, British company, because they've fairly reliably produced nothing but wank. <laughs> I mean, they're the guys who made, um, like, the Alien vs. Predator game. That was bloody awful. Well, I think the one game, the, the one good game they made was the first Alien vs. Predator on PC. And I think we could do without that. Maybe there wouldn't be so much uh, continual torture, torture of the Alien franchise. Up until Alien Isolation, I suppose. Okay, don't try and kiss a boxer. Of course not. He will kiss you back well, with he had, his fists. Yeah, he had the little the the little tune, you know, music notes around his head, and then and then he got pulled into the ground to become part of the mystical underworld. Yeah, and then there's another hole over here, so I'm like, oh, okay. And he's gonna be the next gimp. Yeah, he's just dudes down there having a bit of a workout. Previous gimp's gonna train him up like Zorro. All right, you have to pick questions this week because I pick questions every other week, and you bitch and moan. All right. Um... Uh, Hurry up. Don't yeah. read them, just pick one. Yahtzee, how do you personally get past writer's block? I knew you were going to pick that Asked one. Asked by Ken Deliza. Well, Ken Deliza, personally, I just try to force myself. I mean, as when I'm writing a book, I set myself a target for a page a day. And a lot of writer's block comes from just lacking faith in the stuff you're writing. And the secret is to not give a shit. Just write whatever garbage comes to mind if you have to. Get that page out. Get as get by whatever means necessary to the next bit you're interested in writing. And then because that's what a first draft is for. Go back and sort it out later. I think Mogworld perfectly reflects that writing attitude. Well, well, since you previously stated that it was a good book, I'm yes, going I'm to assume. I'm teasing you, you great big fucking Betty. Here's the funny thing about that question. There are loads of questions that get posed to me about things that I'm interested in and I know you have no interest or grasp of and I don't bother ever answering them because, you know, I know you have a hissy fit at daring to answer something that doesn't involve you. No, I get to throw a hissy fit because you waffle like what you just did. That wasn't waffling. That was pointing out something you do. No, that was waffling. Answering that like, was using 20 words where three would have done. You suck tits. That's better. So how would you get past writer's block, Gabe? Oh, give up and try something else. That's the <laughs> motto of your whole fucking life, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, except dealing with my personal demons. That's, that, that was worth it, but everything else. I don't know. I think people should quit a little more, don't you think? I mean, don't you think there are people who should have quit? Um, yeah, you're just proving my point continually, the more things you say. <laughs> Another question. It's weird how you're an egotist. Hmm? It's weird how you're an egotist. It doesn't seem, you to seem like you have much to be an egotist about. Remember when I met you, what your life was like? What your, what your, your, your personal life was like? Um, glamorous and wealthy, because I made so much money <laughs> for my success. Okay, literally, Yahtzee used to do this thing where he'd walk up and constantly go on about how much money he made and how that must make me jealous because we're the same age and I don't have that much money. Yeah, and yeah he, I, I wonder how you get through life without killing you yourself. You dealt right? with... Zero of your sad personal demons. Like, zero. None of them. You, you are don't. still an anxious, hey, sad, hey, cranky little person. Hey, hey, you don't know me. You don't, <laughs> you don't, you, do. you, you talk don't... to me outside of these things. You talk to me when you're drunk. Dude, do serious <laughs> talk now. You don't want to know what kind of shit I have gotten over. Uh, I mean, consider the good, stuff I've still got. Good. And this, this is like all sad, miserable people. You're, you're fucking angry at anybody else who manages to change. It just infuriates you that someone could fucking change. The reason, yeah, that it's like dealing with my fucking drinking, man. I quit drinking in one day. All my friends work in bars, I go back to bars. I haven't relapsed once in fucking, you know, nearly three years now. L look up how hard that is. is what a this... difficult thing that is to fucking do. Sorry, are you trying to dispute the fact that I said you're an egotist? No, I am an egotist. I maintain everybody should be an egotist because you are the window through which the universe fucking occurs. And I think a little more egotism, you'd understand yourself a bit better. Um, you hinge your you hinge your life on external things like your successes and things like that, and I don't think that's healthy. And then you try and belittle mine because I've made like personal fucking journeys. Yes, that is a classic egotism by the sound of it. Yeah, I, again, like you haven't dealt with your fucking things, and that's it's it's your insecurity. That's the thing. Like every fucking time, it's your insecurity. You know what? How fucking dare you tell me I haven't dealt with stuff? <laughs> 
Like I say, you don't know me, dude. There are maybe there are things I don't like to talk about because they're far in the past. But you know, shut dude, the fuck up. I'm talking up about, about shit that you've talked about while I've known you. Yeah. Yes. Well, imagine the shit I haven't told you about. You get talkative when you look it up. Well, the Mana Bar opening was an interesting one. Oh, video's done. I didn't notice. <laughs> well, I hope that answered your question, Mr. I've forgotten who you are. Or whatever. Any, any fi- passing final thoughts for the viewers? Japan is fucking perplexing. Thank you. I think everybody knew that. Yeah, but I mean, don't you think that this game has managed to go a little bit like... If it were just the town, that'd be one thing. But then it starts to get to those weird sub-towns. And I think that's above and beyond the call of weird. Well, maybe we're just... Maybe maybe they'd feel the same way about, say... The, the League, goodies. League of Gentlemen, or... Uh, the goodies. I think the goodies would be weird to other people. Yeah, I think that would probably be a bit lost on the Japanese. Kitten Kong. Or, um... Actually, that would just make sense. You know what? Showing this to us would probably be like showing Confessions of a Window Cleaner to the Japanese. Because that is just such a British thing, Confessions of a Window Cleaner. Is that one of those, cleaner. like, carry-on-like things? It's one of those, like, carry-on things that is also pornography. Like, there's tits and, like, depictions of sex So, in like, it. softcore stuff. Yeah, so people oh, okay. were supposed to get their rocks off on it, but it's also, like, full of shitty carry-on style double entendre humour. <laughs> Do they even go to the effort of making a double entendre, or is it just like That's tits? the weirdest thing. They do cheeky gags, and then show, also show tits and sex as well. So it was one of those weird things where like they're not allowed to say the word fuck, but they are allowed to have like full nipple. You know, fuck Jet the Japanese. I don't think any other country would understand confessions of a window cleaner, frankly. Oh, we had things like that in Australia, but I'd say that's probably just because we're like the child of Britain. Oh, yeah, that's right. You had, what's it called? Barry McKenzie? Uh, yeah, there was that. There was... Was Alvin Purple Australian or British? I don't know. I've never All right, heard it's got to be probably, probably Australian. Australian then. And I think that was. I think that was in that realm. Okay. I, I really hope someone watching this is Japanese and can just give me an idea from this perspective. Is what we just saw weird by your understanding? That'd be my question for the end of it. Yeah, maybe this was just a big trick they play on Westerners. In which case, bravo! <laughs> yeah, well played, Japan. <laughs> well played. Got me with your pole, dude. Bye bye, turtles. Gabe's a cunt. Tit. <laughs>